trespasses. We thank him for his grace, his mercy. deserve it, but because of his love, his grace, and his mercy, let us lift his name continuously, way up high. Thank you, 
Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. As we come this morning, just think back. He left the heavens, all the splendor of heaven, knowing his destiny. He could have said no. When he was on the cross, he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the whole world and to set him free. But he thought of me. He thought of you. Praise the name of Jesus. And this morning, we want to lift him up. We want to give him all the glory. We want to celebrate what Jesus has done for us. If he has done something for you, let us celebrate him this morning. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus higher to lift glory up to the God. name you, of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to Praise God. the Lord. Hallelujah. We continue to lift the name of Jesus high. After all of what he has done for us on the cross of Calvary, he deserves our praise. And all praises belongs to him. He didn't have to do what he has done. But because he was thinking of us, then he has done it all. He have paid the price that he did not owe, the debt he did not owe. We owe it all to him. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our eternal God and Father, we worship you this morning. We honor you. We glorify you. We remember today the pain, the suffering of the cross. And all that Jesus was willing to endure. We thank you, Lord. You endure all of that so we could be set free. You pay the price, Lord, and we thank you. We bow our hearts this morning. 
in gratitude. Lord, knowing that what you have done, no one in the world would have done that. But because of your love toward us, because of your mercies, hallelujah, because you loved us so much. Oh, when we were not thinking of you, Lord, you, were, you have us in, the, in your heart and you pay the price. Such a great sacrifice, Lord God. We thank you today. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, sending your son to die for us. Help us never to take this for granted. For the gift that you have given unto us. Help us, O oh God, to humble ourselves each day. And to remember. Help us to remember what you have done for us. Sometimes we in our busy lives and we forget. But help us never to forget, Lord God. Help us to remember it every day. Because you sent your only son, the one son you had, you sent him to die for us. And he went to the cross to pay the price. This morning we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you this morning. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for the price. Thank you for the wounds. The scarred, the nail scarred hands. Thank you for the spear in your side. You did not have to do it, but you have done it for us. And you saw that we went astray. And you want to bring back man to you, Lord. So you go through all the agony and the pain. Just for us. So we thank you, Lord. Help us to remember the sacrifice. Thank you for your death and Calvary. The shame and the pain. It was for me. It was for you. So we thank you this morning. And as we go through this day, God, I pray, not through this day alone, but the rest of our lives, that we will remember. This is one thing we have to remember. What you have done on Calvary for us. So today, help us as we go through this service. God, that we pour out our hearts before you and humble ourselves at, at your feet, knowing that you have paid that everlasting price for us. This morning, we give you thanks and we give you praise because it all belongs to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise your name, Lord. We glorify you this morning. Yes, Lord. We honor you, Lord. From the depths of our heart. We say thanks. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to read a scripture reading this morning. Taken from St. Matthew 27. Thank you, Lord. St. Matthew 27 from 1 to verse 54. We're going to do a bit of reading this morning. Responsive reading. St. Matthew 27. 1 to 54. Praise your name, Lord. Oh, you are holy, Lord. You are holy. We glorify you, Lord. We glorify you. Praise God. Responsive reading. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Then 
Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hung himself. And they consulted together and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. And gave them for the potter's field as the Lord directed me. And while he was being accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. But he answered him not one word, so that the governor marveled greatly. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. For he knew that they had hand, handed him over because of envy. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Pilate said to them, What then shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said to him, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water, washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. Then he released Barabbas to them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. Then they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. Now as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. They gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink, but when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there. (laughs) 
Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. And saying, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. Even the robbers who were crucified with him revile him with the same thing. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabathani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge filled with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints who have fallen asleep were raised. Fifty-four together. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw that the earthquake and things that happened, they feared greatly. Truly, this was... Son of God. I hope they, they should have seen that before. They have done what they've done. But it, because it was for me and for you, they have to do what they have done. God bless you. Thank God for the reading of his holy word this morning. Truly, this was the Son of God. I wonder when last of we took the time to read that much scripture. But it's good to be reminded of the story, what happened on that first Easter weekend. Let me take this time to greet all of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and soon coming King. I bring pastoral greetings from our senior pastor in his absence and Lady Cathy who is somewhere around, somewhere there. We thank God for them and for the ministry that they have brought to Gateway. To Doc, Dr. Hyatt, um, CEO, we wanna thank God for her and to all the ministerial staff, we thank God for you in your place. It is, in, it is really indeed a good thing to be in the house this morning. And as we come to worship, we want to thank God for all that he has done to us and for us. Thinking about this, Jesus is life, is death, and is resurrection. When we pause long enough to think about Jesus, he came and he lived. He lived a full life. It's only 33 and a half years, but it was a full life in which he welcomed neighbors. He welcomed strangers. He welcomed friends. 
to sit, to hear, to eat with him. Experiencing his love. Experiencing the joy that they share together. And because of this, we this morning are sharing Jesus Christ with you. And it's our desire to share Jesus Christ with others around us in our neighborhoods. In Matthew 25 and verse 36, the word of God reminds us, for he, for I was hunger, and he gave me nothing to eat. And he gave me something to eat, sorry. I was thirsty, and he gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. And so this Easter season, we want to follow the foot, footsteps of Jesus. When you see someone hungry, give them something to eat. When you see them thirst, give them something to drink. When you find a stranger, bring them in to the fold. Invite them into the fold. And so at this time, we just want to extend a pastoral greeting to each and every one that as we understand this season, Jesus came. He experienced love amongst those he shared life with. And so it is for you and me to take the same steps Jesus did to share life, to share love, to share freedom with those around us. And God bless you this morning in Jesus' name. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. Can we stand and sing in memory? On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem, the emblem of suffering and shame. I don't know about you, but I love, I love, and I love that old cross. Where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners. So I'll cherish. Yes, 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 yes. That's right, sister. Till my trophy. I don't know about you, but I'm a cling. I'm gonna cling. I'm gonna cling. cling to the old rugged cross. All my life. For a crown. To the old rugged cross, I'll ever be true. To the old rugged cross. I will ever be true. It's shame and reproach. It's shame and reproach. Gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory
I don't know about you, but I'm a hold on. I'm a cling. I'm a cling. I'm a cling. For a crown. Let's sing the chorus one more time. So I'll cherish, so I'll cherish. So I'll cherish it all down. Till my trophy. I don't know about you, but I'm a cling, I'm a cling, I'm a cling. Just remain standing with me. Brother Dean, would you come here one second? And, uh, and Deacon Brown, would you come here one second? Would you come here one second? Would you come here one second? I haven't heard these men sing in a while. I want to hear them sing the chorus one time. I want to hear them sing the chorus one time. I want to hear them sing the chorus one time. Brother Dean, sing this chorus one time for me. So I'll share the Tell somebody, tell somebody, I'll cling. Tell somebody, I'll cling to the old rugged cross. Tell somebody, I'm going to hold on to the cross. Tell somebody, I'll cling to the old rugged cross. And then you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I will cling. I will cling to the old rugged cross. And exchange it someday for a crown. Give the Lord a great big hand of praise, would you? Who is Jesus to me? Who is Jesus to me? This morning, as we pause, to remember 
and celebrate and commemorate this Friday we call Good Friday. We want to share in what we would call back in the day our testimony service. But we want to share on a theme, on a thought. Who is Jesus to me? I mean, for many people, he has many things. But on this day, I'd like you to share from your heart, about five or six of us or so, who is Jesus to me? We are going to have a video reflection at this time. And then right after that video reflection, I'm going to ask a few from the overflow, a few from this aisle, a few from this aisle to share on who is Jesus to me. Briefly, to the point, as we continue to remember this Good Friday, remembering, as it says, by his wounds, we are healed. Please fix your attention to the screen for this video presentation and right after we'll get into our testimony service our reflection who is Jesus to me this is Jesus born into poverty in an insignificant corner of a conquered nation this is Jesus a traveling preacher a homeless outcast called crazy and possessed. This is Jesus, another hopeless rebel, mocked and beaten, hung on a cross to die. This is Jesus, another lifeless body, stuffed into a borrowed tomb, soon to be forgotten. Is this really Jesus? Wake up. Wake up, O oh sleeper, and rise from the dead. This is Jesus, sent by the Father to be crushed for the sins of the world. This is Jesus, declaring to all he would be killed and then raised to life on the third day. This is Jesus, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead. This is Jesus, a missing body from an empty tomb on a Sunday morning. This is Jesus, the image of invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, the Lamb of God, the light of the world. This is Jesus. Savior, Lord, King, Alpha, Omega, Creator, Redeemer, Friend to Sinners, Hope of Nations, the Messiah. This is Jesus, the resurrection and the life for all who trust in Him. Wake up, wake up, O oh sleeper, and rise from the dead. This is Jesus. Who is Jesus to me from the overflow? Go ahead, Deacon. Good morning, good morning. Who is Jesus to me? Jesus is hope for me. He is a promise fulfilled. He's a possibility. He is the reason I'm able to get up in the morning and the reason I can get up when I've fallen down. He is, he is my possibilities. He is me thinking about, hey, I may get an invite to go by Sister Brissett for dinner one day to taste that food again. He is that possibility. He is that hope for me. He is my all in all. He is fully man. He was fully man, was fully God. Yes, I can remember that, you know, the time that he died on the cross and I can come here, come to these services, but I have to be honest with you. It's hard for me to, to be mournful because there is so much hope because he was the resurrected one. He's the one ascended up and sitting on the, on the right hand of God. He is, he is second chance. Amen. God bless you. Who is 
Reverend, go ahead, Reverend Dyer. We hear you. My hope is built in nothing less but in Jesus' blood and righteousness. Christ Jesus is my living, my sure hope. Amen. Amen. Sister James. I can say Jesus is everything to me. For once I was living, lost and in sin. Once I was dying, darkness within. And because of him, now. I am living the way he planned, harbored in Jesus, kept by his hands, harbored in Jesus, safe and secure, harbored in Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Who is Jesus to me? Yes, please stand. Please stand and the mic will come to you. Thank you. Good morning. Amen, amen, amen. One more from this side. Who is Jesus? Oh, there's two. Okay, you go first, and then we'll have our sister here. Thank you so much. It was on this day I came to Gateway Church, depressed, very sad. And on 2007, I got saved, right at the altar on Good Friday. So Jesus is my everything, and since then, my life has changed. Wow. So today is your spiritual birthday, 2007, and she's still standing praising God. There's one more there, Deacon. What a oh. friend, what a precious friend, so complete and so divine. If you walk this whole world over, there's no other you can find. He already paid the price, so it's useless fighting and trying because the work is already done. The work is already done. It's finished. The work is already done. On this side, who is Jesus to me? That's fine. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> he watches over you every day, Brother Mom Premier. That's good. Good morning, church. Good morning. testimony might be a little long this morning. In 2018, I battled a lot of silent battles in my life. I got into a really bad car accident, wrecked my car a month after my grandmother passed, and I was diagnosed with a benign tumor in my brain. The doctors told me I would be on medication my whole life. I had to do yearly MRI scans. It affected my hormones. It affected my body and it affected my monthly cycle. I had migraines to the point where sometimes I would just have to be in my room in the dark. My cycles would last five months, six months, seven months at a time, not giving up. I would be fatigued, lightheaded. I've passed out in my tub taking a shower. I've had to have blood transfusion. And in 2023, I usually make vision boards, but last year God led me and said I needed to make a prayer board. And I wrote out all my prayers to him, and I put mustard seeds on the back of each prayer, and I taped it on the board. And one of the prayer was a big prayer, and it said, you would be off medication, and when you do your MRI scan, they would say there's no tumor. And I even looked, and I was like, God, that's a big prayer. 
So I felt within myself questioning him, and he said, do you not trust me? And I said, I do. So I took it upon myself, and I just stopped taking the medication. My mother would call me because she knew the pain I was going through, and she'd be like, Rena, are you taking your medication? And I'd be like, loud and proud, no, mommy, I'm not taking it. I went for my checkup, my yearly checkup in 2023, and the doctor looked at me and said, you haven't been taking your medication, have you? And I said, why do you act? She said, your hormone levels have increased higher than when you started care, and your tumor has grown in size. So I was very discouraged in that moment, and on the drive back, I remember questioning God, like, did I not really hear from you? I thought I was to be healed. And I remember the Spirit asking, did I tell you to stop taking your medication? And I said, you sure didn't. So my mother was like, Rena, I know this isn't the life that you want, but in this moment, just take your medication, pray over it each time before you put it in your mouth, because they doubled the dose after that appointment. And I remember in November and December, my cycle hit me so hard to the point where I couldn't really, I had no energy. I couldn't walk to the bathroom without being lightheaded. My father came and prayed over me. One morning, it was so bad to the point the pain was blinding. I just saw a bright light over me and I swear it was my time. I kept on hearing the voice say, if you fall asleep, you're gonna die. And I kept on hearing the question, what is your name and what does it mean? And I used to say my parents were just so in love, they named me Renford and Michelle. But my name also means rebirth, power, and grace. So March 8th, 2024, I went back in for my routine. Well, I, had, I was three months and six months for check-ins, but then I went back to three months. And I went into the doctor's office and I was just like, this is routine for me. They're about to tell me the tumor grew again because from 2018 up until then, it has always grown. And I remember the doctor scrunching up her face when she looked at my scans and said, I have some news for you. And I just prepared myself. I said, what? She said, I'm looking at your scans and I don't see a tumor anymore. She said, I'm looking with and without contrast and the tumor's not there and I don't even see any microscopic cells lingering around. So then I said, okay, what's about the medication? Because that was the next prayer that I knew was about to be answered. She said, I just need you to do your blood work and I'm gonna schedule you out for a year in advance because if everything's looking good, we're gonna slowly wean you off the medication and that will be all. This was the first time I've did blood work since 2018 that everything was in the green. I had no red and I had to just say thank you Jesus because he remembered my prayer. He was faithful. This situation had taught me that if I say yes to his will, I have to stick around to see his way. Bishop said on Sunday, sometime God will open the door and we're supposed to be still. He opened the door and showed me a life with no tumor, but then I got too angsty and I got in my own way and I stopped taking the medication. But when you turn and you repent and you go back into his will, he is a faithful father. He is a healer, he is a deliverer. So that is who Jesus is to me. Who is Jesus to me? And oh, you ought to stand on Jesus. your feet and give God glory in this house. You ought to stand on your feet and give God glory in this house. Who is Jesus to me? Jesus is the very precious breath I breathe. And I remember being in the emergency room, unable to breathe. You know, when we tell people of our troubles and they say, I understand, many times they don't understand unless they've experienced it themselves. But being in the emergency room, unable to breathe, all I can say, Jesus, Jesus, help me. Jesus is the precious breath in my body, without which I cannot do. Amen. Amen. One more, Brother Dean. Let's, let's Go ahead, Brother Dean. Hallelujah. Jesus to me. Lamb of God that take it away the sins of the world. And Jesus is my all in all. He's an healer. He's my sustainer. He's my provider. And he's God. Amen.
Amen. All right, let me take one more. I already came, came with this. I'm going to take one more because this little cute princess is smiling with me. So you just got lucky because I love her, okay? So go ahead real quick, and then we have to move on. Thank you so much. Who is Jesus to me? I have to tell you, God is so good to me. I've been saved a long time, and I've proved it over and over again. I remember 2019. On a Friday, I went and I said, let me just get some rest. And I went to sleep and I see I, I couldn't breathe. I have a problem breathing. I said to my, my daughter, I can't breathe. And she said, mom, let me take you to the hospital. My son took me and I remember reaching at the hospital and um, the nurse, my son went to park. My, um, the nurse came to me and, and said, get a wheelchair. And they took me in, and that's all I know. Mm. I, I, and that was the Friday. I didn't know anything until the Sunday. They incubate me twice. I know God was with me, and I was praying. And, and I know people were praying for me. Uh, when I woke up, I, I see Sister Hyatt, everybody was there. All, you know, God is real. Sister Hyatt is I everywhere, isn't him, she? <laughs> I prove him over She's and like over God. and over again. And my determination is to make heaven someday is my all. All. Pray for me, brethren, because I mean to make heaven my home. He was wounded. For our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities. Surely he's borne our sorrows, and by his stripes. We are healed. Could you stand and sing that one time with me and receive your healing today? He was wounded for our transgression. As we remember his death today on Good Friday, he was bruised for our iniquity. Surely, surely. He's borne our sorrows and by and by. Could you personalize that now? And as we pray this prayer and song, would you receive your healing today? You've seen it. He was wounded for my transgressions. You've heard Ronell's testimony. Our big prayer is answered. You see, what's big for you is really nothing for him. What is great for you, you've heard Deacon Benjamin, you've heard our sister, whatever you need today, he is able, he's able, he's able, and he's doing it today. And by his stripes, I am healed. And by his stripes, I am one last time before we receive God's servant. He was wounded. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. Surely, surely he's born my sorrow and by his stripes and by his stripes I am would you remain standing in the presence of the Lord as we receive God's servant with the word the Lord has sent for us today in this house here at Gateway and I know You've already heard on behalf of our prelate, we bless God that you're here. And we now receive 
the word God has sent through the servant he has chosen today on this Good Friday. Would you open your heart, your spirit, your mind? And would you hear and add here to the word that God has for us through his servant, a man sent from God, whose name is John. Please receive Bishop John Hardy as he comes at this time with God's word to us. God bless you. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Thank you, Reverend Williams. Let me take this opportunity in greeting the household of faith in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus to me? I did not have it on my agenda to share this, but who is Jesus to me? I got saved the 1st of January. 1946 and Good Friday was going to be the first Good Friday service I was going to be attending in my life but I was working at a garment institution on an holy Thursday evening I was finishing up the last piece of work to go home. And those of you do, who have been around for a very long time, you would remember those irons that we used to use. It has a hole at the back. You had to put the coal in the iron. And while I was pressing the, pe the last piece of garment, a piece of hot coal fell out. And those of you who are familiar with turline, you know that once fire touched turline. That's it. And so the fire fell out. And I did not see the fire. And when I held up the pants to put it on the rock, I saw this huge hole in the fabric. So I took it to the manager and showed him my dilemma. And he said, well, Mr. Hardy, all you have to do is come in tomorrow morning and remake the piece of garment. And I said to him, I said, sir, this is going to be my first Good Friday service in all my 19 years of living and he looked at me and he said Mr. Hardy if you don't come to work tomorrow morning I know where your church is and I am going to come to that church and I'm going to curse so much bad word that the place would get dark and I had a dilemma I really had a dilemma on that Good Friday. But I went home and I said, God, I would want to obey my manager, but I'd like to be in your service today. I've never known what a Good Friday is like. And so in the morning, I got dressed and went to Good Friday service. And while I was in the service, I saw the manager drove up into the churchyard at Clifton, 52 Mannings Hill Road. And he drove past the church building. And I was now bracing myself uh, to, hear, to hear thunder rolling. And then I saw him slowly drove out. I never heard his voice. Never heard his voice that day. And what I discovered when I went back to work uh, Easter Monday, he said to me, Mr. Hardy, I don't know what powers 
preventing me from coming out of my car and dark up the place. You must be a true Christian. To me, Jesus is my defender. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let me take this opportunity in greeting the household of faith in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I'd like to also acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst today. I should also like to acknowledge Dr. Williams in his absence. And also, I would like to acknowledge First Lady uh, Kathy Williams. I acknowledge all the officiating ministers that stood in the podium earlier this morning. I should also like to acknowledge all the ministers, elders, and deacons of this local assembly. Praise and worship team, musicians, media members, I acknowledge you very specially. Members in general, visitors and friends, those of you that are worshiping with us on the various platform, I certainly uh, recognize you in a very special way. Last but not least, I'd like to acknowledge my lovely wife, Sister Veronica Hardy. I should like to say a very special thanks to Bishop Dr. Williams, our CEO, and other administrative officials of this local assembly for affording me the opportunity to stand in uh, this position on this very special day. Very, very few ministers, including myself, ever give up this space on such a day like this. And to be considered, to be honored by this August body, in giving me the opportunity, I'd like to say a very, very special thanks to each individual. Just before I bring the word, I should like to request special prayers for a project that I have been working on for three and a half years. And the 26th of September this year, I should come to the finality of this research project. On the 22nd of next month, 6.30 our local time, I will appear before the University Ethics Committee to make a defense of my dissertation. And this is, thank you, and this is a moment of decision. Either I make it or it breaks me. So I do need your sincere prayer in this hour. Probably, I would like to say, like Jesus, do watch with me, even for one hour. God richly bless you. I should like to invite you to stand with me as we read a portion of the scriptures for our meditation. And then 
as soon as I uh, complete the reading, should like the praise members of the praise team to come and stand with me, and the media team will put a song on the screen that I should like for us to reflect on. This scripture is taken from St. John chapter 19 and verse 30. St. John, St. John chapter 19 and verse 30. Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Chorus at praise and worship. It is finished. It is finished. The song, uh, right, it's on the screen. Shall we do that as a reflection of the transaction and Calvary that first Advent day? It is finished.
Yes, it is finished. It is finished. The end of the conflict. The end of the conflict. It is finished. It is finished. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. The message is, you may be seated. The message is, it is finished. It is finished. There are many Bible scholars that have varied conjectures as to what is truly the embodiment of the last statement of Christ on that cross. Time would not permit me to pursue some of these assumptions. But Matthew Henry, a noted scholar of the Bible, puts it this way. And I quote, It is finished. That is, the work of man's redemption and salvation is now completed. At least, the hardest part of the undertaking is over. A full satisfaction is made to God's justice. A fatal blow given to the power of Satan. A fountain of grace open up that shall forever flow. A foundation of peace and happiness laid that shall never fail. Christ had now gone through with his word. And finish it. For as for God, his work is perfect. When I begin, saith he, I will also make an end. And as in the purchase, so in the application of redemption. He that has begun a good work will perform it. The mystery of God is finished. Unquote. That was indeed a mouthful. But in summation, it is finished. But I'd like to take the liberty in adding to the list of these conjectures three other things that are finished. When Jesus made that declaration, three things are finished that affects you and me directly. Firstly, the power of sin is finished. The power of sin is finished. Since the fall of Adam, sin had total domination over the human race. Listen to Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. 
Like a brutal wrestler, sin had humanity in its iron grips with no apparent intent to let go. The theologian Paul Tillich, a very notable theologian, calls it the extensional disruption. And I quote from Paul Tillich. Then after his sin, that is Adam, he was driven into, ex into exile. And by his sin, the whole human race, which was the root of him, was corrupted by him. And thereby, subject to the penalty of death. And so it happened that all descended from him and from the woman who had led him into sin and was condemned at the same time with him. Being the offspring of carnal lust, and that which seems to perpetuate an enduring punishment by it drawn through diverse errors and sufferings into that last endless punishment which they suffered in common with fallen angels. In a nutshell, Paul Tillich is giving a description of the state of our humanity under the power of sin. But simply put, sin is a continuous cause of human depravity. It is the cause. Sin in is the cause. Recently, I had the privilege of riding on the public transportation. And in retrospect, in my imagination, I start to observe persons that I might not have had the chance to take a close-up examination on if I was driving. And what struck me, I saw all these persons that were in my observation at one time or another, all these human beings, to borrow a phrase from Minister Renford, were little bundles of joy wrapped up in the arm of a mother or a father who, who who as babies brought happiness and joy to their families, to their communities because of their loveliness. And which of us can resist the charm of a child? Which of us? I have a story that I could tell about my own first son, but let me not double into politics. But looking at all of these persons in their present state, something struck me. A burden of sadness filled my heart as I saw faces with traces of wasted years. Homeless persons with all of their earthly belongings, including their beddings, stuffed in paper bags 
or a worn out knapsack. These persons I saw, I questioned myself, John, what went wrong? What went wrong in the process of time, in the lives of all these precious babies? Why are they what they are today? Why have they become the relics of time, discarded on the scrap heap of humanity? What went wrong in their lives? And the rhetorical question came back to me in my mind. Sin is the cause. My brothers and my sisters, oh, I, I, I could almost bring the service to a close here now because like Minister Rainford, I start to get a feeling of hilariousness just to think that no longer the power of sin has any control over my person. I don't know about you, oh, but I am excited uh, to, give, to give a graphic description of what I am feeling. Uh, Samson, who is a portrait of fallen humanity, felt the icy grip of sin. According to Judges uh, chapter 16, uh, could I ask the, 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 the media team if they could preach with me today? Can you show us Samson? In his, in his A.D. Now, we don't have time to go through his biography, but this was a, a human being. who angels. It was angels who pronounced his birth. He, will, he was given the honor to have an angelic annunciation and pronunciation of, of his birth. Oh, uh, we, we see him here in his A day. Watch him. Watch him with, uh, with I think this is, uh, with a jawbone of an ass. Before sin uh, had control of him, he was a mighty man of warrior. Uh, he could have used a simple jawbone of an ass to slay a thousand enemies when, when we are not under the control of sin we can do valiantly for God do we have another depiction of him with the columns of the gate of Gaza can we uh, media team, I must apologize. I spring this on you uh, suddenly this morning. Uh, so do, do, don't blame them. Uh, yes, here he is. Here he is. And historians, Jewish historians, say that his physique was not looking anything like this. He, he was probably... The statue of a minister Rainford Williams. But without sin in his life, he could lift up two gateposts, put them on their shoulder, and walk with them. Sin is a destructive force. To any human being. <clears throat> but watch me. Watch this with me. Judges chapter 16 and verse 21. Then the Philistine sees him. Hear me and hear me well. All of us should take caution. Not to double with sin. Because whatsoever we sow in sin. 
we will reap it. Hear the end story of uh, Samson. Then the Philistine sees him, gorge out his eyes, and they brought him down to Gaza and bound him with bronze chains. And he, he was a grinder in prison. And if I was, if I was doing typology, a, a, a discourse in, type, in typology, we would go through the three stages that uh, some sin in essence will bring us to. Then the Philistine sees him. First of all, notice the first segment of our text is the power of sin. Can I suggest, I'll probably make, may I take the further step in, in not suggesting, uh, but declaring so sin as a power to seize us. Had it not been for this day called Good Friday, none of us could have escaped the seizing power of sin. Ah, had, it, had, it, had it not been for Good Friday, every one of us could have waken up this morning under a, 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 a storefront shelter that we spent our, our sleep uh, last night. Every one of us in here, had it not been for what Jesus did on Good Friday, like many of the persons who I observe over the gone uh, weeks, we, every one of us who could be walking right now as I speak towards a rotten, stinking garbage bin, uh, looking for a piece of bread uh, uh, for our survival. But thank God, uh, thank God it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Uh, the war is over. Uh, the grip of sin. Uh, the power of sin. I'm trying. Let me just try and keep my composure. Sin. The, then the Philistine sees him and gouge out his eyes. And for those of you who may not know, uh, the the, the, the Old time tradition in war in, in, in the Middle East. And, and even, even just now, just last night, I read that a certain country, they are enacting, uh, are re legislating some of these brutish, cruel human atrocities. Uh, when, when, when an opposing army capture its enemies, I'm going to put out their eyes. What they would have done is to get a red hot dagger out of the fire. And they would, they would come up to the victim. They would come up to, uh, to their, their the, uh, the persons that they want to humiliate. And they would have used this hot dagger to scoop out the ball of the eye, out of the socket. That's what it really meant. They gouge out his eyes. Ah, uh, it was brutish. Oh, sin is brutal. Sin has no feeling. Sin has no mercy on us. Uh, uh, sin had the power to grind him. Verse 21 in the text says, and they bound him with bronze chains and he was a grinder in, in the prison and time would not permit me to, to, to play upon words in, in this. And he was a grinder. He was a grinder in prison. 
I, I don't want to, I don't want to fuzzle your mind, but if we go back to the original usage of the, uh, the, the Hebrew word grinder, it has many implications. Uh, 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 sin, sin as a way to roll over humanity and, and bring humanity to powder. To nothingness, uh, see, and 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 you and I, you and I, uh, sitting in this lovely edifice today, uh, we should be ecstatic. We should we should be be rejoicing about this day because what Jesus, what Jesus did on Calvary, uh, brought to an end. Uh, of our grinding he, he brought to an end you and I you and I we can dress up and uh, fancy up and and walk up and look up today look look how look how gorgeous you look down there if if it, if, if if sin had gotten if Jesus did not demolish the power of sin oh God almighty ah uh, 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 in, in Jamaica, we have a we have a Jamaica colloquialism. When you when you are not dressed properly, uh, when you just draw on some clothes, what is that word, Minister Renford? You remember it? You know, you 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 you, you are Americanized now. But we we call it we call it we call it nail. You know, when you just hang up uh, uh, clothing and nail it just droop down and it look, uh, 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 oh God. <laughs> uh, but thank God we can look like what we are. Sin has no more power to grind us and make us look disfigured. We can stand proudly as an image of the almighty God in his original creation. It is finished. Today we can say thank God the power of sin is finished. According to Romans chapter 6 and verse 14 for sin shall not be master over us for you are not under the curse but under grace oh hallelujah and and let me just let me just see if i can slow down and double into into something this this philosophy our theory about generational curse. Yes, it is real. Generational curse, even from scripture, is real. But don't let anybody tell you, you who have been washed by the blood that dripped from Jesus' hands and his feet, if you are washed by the blood, you are free from generational curse. It is here in the Bible. You are not under the curse. Oh God, help me here today. Help me here. Help me. The songwriter, the songwriter puts it this way. Once like a bird in prison I dwell. No freedom from my sorrow I felt. But Jesus came. Listen to me. And glory to God. He set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I am glory bound, Jesus to see. For glory be to God. He set me free. He set me free. He set you free. He set you free. No more crosses. I mean, no more moderation. Hallelujah. Anything, any, anything that happens to us today, all things work together 
for good to them that love the law. Nobody can set anything on you. Nobody can put anything in your drinks uh, to cause you to have any. Oh, God help me here. The power, the power of sin, the power of sin has been broken. The power of sin has been broken. Oh, oh can I say to somebody here today, if you know the liberty that you are in on this blessed day, you could put on your dancing shoes, take off your garment of sorrow, whatever you are going through today. Ah, you could rejoice. You could dance and sing because ah, like the Negro slave song, like the Negro slave song ah i am free i am free i am free thank god i am free i wonder if there is anybody here in the reach of my voice whether in person or online you cannot say that you are free there are some cobwebs there are some chains that are still holding you on they are illegal capturers ah can i tell you can i tell you jesus when he said it is finished, you and I earn the ability to shake them off. To shake them off. Shake off Satan. Yes, he is still hanging around or trying to get a hold, trying to get a grip on you. Oh, but you can, you can, that precious blood, that precious blood, you can say to all the adversaries, to all the emissaries of Satan, I rebuke you. I plead the blood against you. I am a free man. I am a free woman. Get out of my life. Get out of my environment. Get out of my family. Get out of the life of my children. Freedom! But not only the power of sin was finished, but secondly, the payment for sin is finished. According to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28. So Christ was crucified once to take away the sins of many people. And he will appear a second time. Not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Since the fall of Adam and Eve, humanity was unable to finish the payment for sin. Sin has a penalty attached to it. Listen to Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20. The soul that sinned, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Ah, uh, ah, uh, the songwriter, the songwriter Isaac Watt capsulated in these words. Not all the blood of beasts and Jewish altars slain could give the guilty conscience ease. Or wash away the stain. But Christ, the heavenly lamb, takes our guilt away. A sacrifice of noble name. And 
richer than they. Ah, we could never in all of our humanity, regardless, even if, if we are in our early 90s, our early 90s, and have become the youngest billionaire on earth, ah, we could not find enough money uh, to pay for our sins. Hallelujah. But as the text says, every soul that sinneth shall die. You and I, you and I, at one point in time in our lives, we were standing in God's judgment all. And a little later on, we're going to do, uh, uh, make a display of that. You and I had, had a, 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 a penalty hanging over our head because we were debtors to God. But when Christ said, it is finished, the price was paid in full. It is finished. The price, the price is fully paid. Uh, it is finished. Humanity no longer needs a rescheduling debt relief. And I coined that phrase from an article I read in 2013. And we're talking about the payment is paid in full. Let's listen to this. To this article, article uh, from the BBC headline on the 12th of February 2013. And I quote the headline Jamaica in crisis debt swap plan. And the article continued to say Jamaica has announced plans for its second debt swap in three years in the face of a serious economic crisis. Hear what the reporter said. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller is taking measures to reduce its debt which currently stands at 140% of gross domestic product, one of the highest ratio in the world. What a crisis. It, the, the article went on to say, if this, and listen to this last clause, if this debt, is not reduced, Jamaica faces a dismal failure, Minister, Minister Portia Simpson said, unquote. Hear me, brothers and sisters, using this article as a pivotal point to make a statement to us today. Had not Jesus paid our death our debt and Calvary, we would be in a dismal crisis. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Ah, if, if Jesus did not take step, take steps and Calvary, not just to reduce the debt of humanity, but paid it off in full, humanity would have no hope. I hear, I hear the songwriter saying, I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness. Watch and pray, find in me thine all in all. Jesus, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Hallelujah, 
Aleluia. E pei de tol. E pei de tol. E pei de tol. Aleluia. Aleluia. You know, you know. If you, if you, are, if you have a, a good conscience, you know that when you hold anybody, you don't want to go into their company because you feel embarrassed. You feel a sense of shame. So you try to take a white circle. Uh, but when you pay up, when you pay up your bill, when you pay up your bill, and you don't have any shame hanging over you, you can... Uh, you, you can go into company. I wanted, I wanted to use the Jamaica vernacular, which is what it really means. You, you can now exop. You, you, it, it means you can go into company because you don't owe anybody anything. Nobody can come to assault you. Nobody can come take off your jacket or take off uh, pieces of your clothes because you, you owe them. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, the debt is paid. And I hear another songwriter said, I wandered so aimless. So aimless, life filled with sin. I would not let my dear Savior in. Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness. No more in night. I am so happy. No sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. I saw the light. The darkness is finished. Oh, oh, I just feel, I just feel provoked to just ask you to stand. Turn to somebody that is nearby you and make the proclamation proclamation no more darkness come on speak it speak it in your environment speak it in your life speak it over your ch speak it with authority speak it no more darkness no more darkness no more darkness no more night no more night for praise the Lord I've seen the light I've seen the light. Hallelujah. 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 Could you be seated for just a few more, few more short minutes? Not only the power of sin was finished, not only the payment of sin was finished but finally the penalty of sin is finished Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord ever since the fall of Adam and Eve the penalty of sin followed humanity like a midnight ghost. The entire human race stood condemned in God's eternal judgment all. Justice call, but mercy answer. Isaiah, Isaiah, in his messianic vision, he foresaw the verdict of uh, the penalty that was exacted upon us according to Isaiah 53 and verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The punishment, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his stripes 
Aleluia! Aleluia! By His stripes we are healed. Thank God the case is finished. Isaiah saw in the, the past that this penalty uh, that, uh, that was hanging over us it would have come to par, come to an end. It would be finished. Thank God the case is finished. All of humanity can walk out of God's judgment all and shout triumphantly. It is finished. It is finished. Uh, let me just try and bring this thing to a, a dramatic close. Uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of death. I would like to declare today that your case, my case, is somebody hearing me? I am going to be closing. But I am declaring prophetically that your case is finished. It's finished. At times, persons have cases in the legal system that cannot come to a close. Lawyers and other bureaucrats draw out your case because they want to draw out money out of you but this day but this day the final word recorded by John it is finished it is trans the translation of that word is tetelsiai in the Greek it is the perfect tense which means something that took place in the past which at present abiding result. It could also be translated. It stands finished always and will be finished. In other words, and pardon me, pardon me, the Jamaican fever is still in me. In Jamaica, in Jamaica we would say when, when, when there is an element of victory and triumph, it done. It done. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Hallelujah. Your case might be long and drawn out and you are tired of the case you might have made listen to me you might have made 30 applications for somebody to stand security for you and 30 times you have been turned down nobody sees you at night when you turn off the light and buried your head in your pillow and weep because of your case. But God would have given me the opportunity and the privilege to stand here today under the authority of the Holy Ghost to make a divine declaration over your life. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Ah, it is finished. It is finished. I'm speaking to you, sir. I am speaking to you, ma'am. Not with my human, my human intellectual ability, but under the divine unction of the Holy Ghost. I am declaring it is finished. It is finished. Whatever you have, whatever you have. Can you permit me just a few brief moments to try to pictorialize what I have been trying to say? 
Can I ask your honor, Honorable Minister Jackie Powell, to join me on the podium? Can I ask Elder Colin to join me on the podium? Can I have some mics here? Can I ask Minister Renford to join us on the podium? This is an unearthed skit. We have not done any practice. But what I'm going to be asking these honorable persons to do is to demonstrate what it means. It is finished. This piece of instrument in my hand this piece of instrument in my hand called a gavel. When this honorable lady hold this piece of instrument in her hand, in her courthouse, whoever is standing before her, she holds the future of that individual in her hand with that little piece of instrument. And she is going to not use her legal professional voice uh, to, to bring it to a finish, but she's going to use her divine authoritative voice to make a proclamation in this house today and the platforms that are living, listening. Uh, uh, this, is, this is a short skit uh, that we did not, uh, we, we did not uh, rehearse. So uh, the participants don't even know what, uh, what predicament and position they are in today. But watch this. This is the accused. Standing before, uh, right, right. Uh, this is the accused, and this is the prosecutor. And I don't see any. Can somebody who have a big Bible or a big book give me something that that we we, we can demonstrate this kit? It is finished. It is finished. Uh, this is the prosecutor a folder, and for now, it is a miniature folder uh, to what some prosecutor uh, bring to her, honors, her, her honorable court. Uh, but uh, the prosecutor, and I am going to be acting as the defense lawyer. I am the defense lawyer and the prosecutor, and this is, uh, this is the accused. Uh, this is the accused, and the accusation, the accusation is, is big. And the prosecutor is now going to be responding to my question. Mr. Prosecutor, you are a well-learned man, and you have, you have done your, your investigation uh, thoroughly, and you have come to this open court to present your case against this accused would you now uh, in this open court uh, uh, state what is the accusation that you have against my client come on Mr. Prosecutor answer me what is the accusation ladies and gentlemen of the jury you have heard all the testimonies and evidence against um, gentlemen. Mr. Prosecutor, Mr. Prosecutor, I ask you for the evidence. The evidence, the give evidence the court. The evidence that has been presented to the jury is that this man is a born sinner. Where is the evidence? Where is the evidence, Mr. Prosecutor? What has he done? What crime has he committed to cause him to be a sinner? Mr. Mr. Defense Attorney, 
He has committed many crimes against humanity. Where and are the facts? And even if he did not commit any Where case, are the facts? He is a born sinner. You are only born presenting, Mr. Prosecutor. You are only presenting assumption. Where is the evidence? That's right. <laughs> Your Honor. I appeal to your judgment that this man was born in sin and shaped in the iniquity of sin. Therefore, he is guilty of death. Your Honor, Your Honor, this world well-learned prosecutor, all that he has been doing since he came into your honorable court has been filibustering in the labyrinth of mitigation and have not proved provided any evidence against this my client your honor I appeal to your judgment I rest my case give a verdict <laughs> come 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 on stand at the podium This court has listened to the testimony from both sides. And this court, knowing who is the author and finisher of our faith, and this court, knowing full well that that author and finisher of our faith went to the cross so that everything that was presented against this defendant today that would have caused him to face death and prison. This court, understanding the one who stands in his stead, the one who has already stood at the cross, bared the brunt of the sin and the shame. This court closes this case and says to this defendant, go in peace. Go in peace. I am free, praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is resting, it's such a blessing, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. It is finished, the battle is over. It is finished, there'll be no more war. It is finished, the end, the end of the conflict it is finished and jesus is lord it is finished and jesus is lord can you sing it one more time with me everybody it is finished it is finished. the power of sin is finished the battle is over it is finished it is finished it is finished. There'll be no more war. There'll be no more war. He cried on the cross. It is finished. It is finished. The end of the conflict. The end of the conflict. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. And Jesus is Lord. And Jesus.
I was in a Sunday school class recently, and the teacher said something that I'm going to take with me for the rest of the todays I have on this planet. I'm going to take it with me for every breath I take. The Sunday school teacher made a comment and I had to ask her afterwards, is this your quote or did you read this somewhere? She said, God's number one plan for man is still salvation. Listen to me carefully. God's number one plan for mankind is Man, woman, boy, girl, born, unborn, man, God's number one plan is still salvation. You see, we, there, there are myriads of things that God has in store for us. Physical and non-physical, but the number one plan, the Sunday school teacher said, is salvation. My sister, you were saved on a Good Friday. Would you stand? 2007, was it? You got saved on a Good Friday. Would you stand? Please, remain standing. You see, every service, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, Christmas, fasting, every meeting, we have, and that's what this day symbolizes. If you're in the room today, and you have not made a complete commitment to Christ. God's number one plan for man is still salvation. Today, you have an option to join her and say, on a good Friday, I gave my life or recommitted my life to Christ. And you say, this finished. Sin has no more power over me. If you're in this room, and you're not yet in a committed relationship with Christ, or maybe you have not, you may, you may have backslidden. Here's one thing I have at the forefront of my mind every time I get a chance to stand and to speak, especially in settings like these. I'm hoping to God that if you're not yet made the decision, I just really want you to come to heaven with us. I said, I'd like for you to come to heaven with us. Of course, we want to win in this life. But ultimately, after this life, to win eternal life. And that comes through Christ and what he did on Good Friday. If you have not yet made a commit commitment to Christ and you'd like us to pray with you today, right where you are, would you raise your hand if you're in this room? You're not a Christian, not yet. You're not yet a child of God. Would you raise your hand? We'd like to pray with you right where you are. Is that young man's hand up? Because I love to pray for kids. Is there a hand? Thank God. Is there another? God bless you. See that hand? Is there another? It's still God's number one plan for salvation. You see two young folks raise their hand. I'm going to ask the adults that's close to them to pray this prayer with them as we pray together. Would you pray this prayer after me? These two young men who raised their hand. You, would, you, would you stand and pray with me and the adult beside you? Would the adult stand with you? Sir, would you stand with him and pray with him if that's okay? Thank you. Thank you. And let us, if we're close to them, would you point your hands and pray with them? Pray this prayer after me. Say, Dear Jesus, thank you for today, this Good Friday, where we remember the sacrifice you made for us on Calvary's cross. Today, I accept your sacrifice. Thank you for dying for my sin. Thank you for dying in my place. I know your number one plan for me is salvation. And today, I accept your salvation. I thank you for your forgiveness and writing my name in that book which says, I'm going to live with you forever after this life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The adults around them, would you embrace them as we pray with them? Almighty God, we thank you for these two young kids. 
who raised their hands. I know they don't understand everything as yet, but something inside of them say, ask for prayer today. And I thank God they responded. Because young people like these are creating havoc all over the world. So they can be effective for the kingdom of God. They're not too young to be used of God. Almighty God, I want to thank you that you would minister to these young kids in a way that only you can make it relevant to them. Your love, your salvation, your caring for them. And thank you that you will envelope them with a community of believers that will not just speak but model Jesus so they can live a life where they live the win-win life. They win in this life and the ultimate life with you, Christ, eternal. For those of us in the room, Almighty God, who needs another touch from you, be it physical, spiritual, it is finished. And we thank you, Almighty God, that Jesus is Lord. You are Lord over every situation we face. You are Lord, you are King, you rule and you reign. And so we thank you, Almighty God. Thank you. It is finished. And thank you for the finished work on Calvary. So now we walk in our freedom and in our victory that you paid for on Calvary. And all God's creation say, all God's creation say, give the Lord a great big hand of praise, would you? Just before we move into receiving our Good Friday offering and this morning I was praying, I was saying, you know, I believe, God, that we're going to get a good Friday offering, a good offering this Friday. Is that all right? But Dr. Travis, come say hello, man. Come say hello. You got to say hello. Come on, say hello. It's the son of Gateway, and we're excited. Every time I see him, I'm excited to see this young man as he continues to progress. We just come and say hi, Doc. Just say a quick hello. Could you? Thank you so much. Give him a round of applause. Let him come say a quick hello. Would you? And I see you're not looking like me. That's good, okay? Because you see the preacher used me as a little skinny thing, okay? But that's all right. It's a good Friday. Um, hard to think of it as good, you know, considering the circumstances of our Savior, but he did something that, you know, we could never do. And uh, we're always eternally grateful for that. Life is rough. It can be rough sometimes, but um, he's able and he's faithful. Just always remember that. Thank you. He is faithful and he is able. Hold on to that, would you? He is faithful and he's able. Now, when you, when you go to a doctor like that, you just feel all right because you know he knows where his source and his strength comes from. Amen? We thank God. Thank God for you, Dr. Travis. As we get ready to worship God in giving, I want to thank you for giving the best you can today. God gave his best on the original Good Friday, didn't he? He didn't send somebody to substitute. He gave his best. He gave his son. As we get ready to give our offerings, whatever it is, we want to thank God that you would give as God has blessed you. Every man as he purposed, every woman as she purposed in her heart. Let us give hilariously. Let's give cheerfully because God loveth a, God loveth a cheerful giver. As we get ready to give, Reverend Robinson is coming to bless our good giving on this Good Friday. 